What's going on everyone? It's Brace from Langchain and in this video we're going to be covering Human in the Loop as a concept and then some APIs that Langgraph has to power Human in the Loop applications. Uh, so what is Human in the Loop? Human in the Loop is essentially when you have some sort of AI application or graph and you want to have human intervention throughout that graph um, to say authorize certain actions like performing refunds um, and you want the graph to pause, let the human come in, inspect what's going on and then edit the state and continue, or reject something and continue on in the graph. Uh, so an example of that could be a customer service chatbot, where users can come on, they can ask questions, and then they can also request refunds. You would not want your AI chatbot to just be able to authorize re refunds if the user asks, because a user could come in and prompt engineer your chatbot to just always give it refunds when it shouldn't actually give out a refund. So what you might do is you might add some human in the loop code to your graph to where before the refund is actually processed, it stops, it interrupts the graph, and it calls some human, and the human can come in, inspect what's going on, and then confirm or deny a refund. The way you would do this in LangGraph is by setting interrupts. So we can do that while we're prototyping in the UI, which is what I'll show you right now, and then we can also do that programmatically, which is how you would ship it to production. Um, so in the UI, when you're prototyping with LangGraph, you can set interrupts by clicking here, um, and you can think of interrupts like a debugger. So when it reaches that node, it will pause, allow you to inspect and edit states, and then carry on. So we have this simple graph here, which has an agent. This agent has one tool bound to it, a process refund tool. And then I've set an interrupt um, for the tools node to where every time the tools node is, is invoked, it will interrupt before then. I can inspect the state, make some changes, and then carry on. I have this refund authorize field in my state, and inside my tools node, I check to see if refund authorize is false, and if it is false, I throw an error. So what we can do right now is invoke this graph, passing in a message saying, hey, I need a refund, and we can see how human in the loop and these interrupts actually work in practice. So I have my message, can I have a refund for my purchase, order number one, two, three. I submit that, it calls the agent, this agent then calls the process refund tool, and since I've set my interrupt on tools, before tools is actually executed, it'll ask me if I want to continue. Before I continue, we can inspect the state, and we see that the refund authorized field is nowhere to be found in the state, right? We only have the messages field. And that's because I have not set a default and I've not set it to true yet. So now if I continue to tools and we inspect the logs, we should, we should see the tools node throw an error saying, hey, you need to authorize a refund first. So continue and boom, we get an error. Permission to refund is required. Now, if we were to create a new thread, paste in our message, and set refund authorized to true, we should be able to go through the graph. It'll pause before tools again. We can then continue and no error should be thrown. It should process our refund successfully and the LLM should let the user know, hey, you got your refund. So we hit submit. We can see I've set refund authorized to true. If I inspect the state here, we can see it here as well. It pauses, we hit continue, so it can continue to the tools node and then successfully process refund for one, two, three. That got routed back to the LLM where the LLM said your refund for order number 123 has been processed. And as we see in the logs, no error was thrown. Now, let's go into the code and see exactly how we would do this programmatically. The first thing you're going to want to do is clone this repository. I'll add a link to it in the description um, and navigate to the human in the loop directory. Inside here is where we have a couple examples showing off human in the loop applications. So, once you've opened up the human in the loop.ts file, we can go to the top and we can look at the state we've defined for our graph. We can see we're extending the built-in messages annotation spec, which just contains a messages field, which contains a list of messages and then a reducer combining these messages. And then we've added one additional field, refund authorized, which is whether or not permission has been granted to refund the user. Then if we scroll down to where we define our graph, we see it's pretty simple. We have two nodes, call model and call tool. We will always start by calling the model. And then after that, we route to this conditional edge if we inspect this conditional edge, we see we extract the state, we get the most recent message, and we say, hey, if it's not an AI message, or if it is an AI message, but has no tool calls, we end. And we saw that in the studio, when after the tool was invoked, it got sent back to the LLM, the LLM just generates some text, and it ended. If the LLM does call tools, then we want to route to the tools node. If we scroll up to the tools node, we can see it extracts the messages and refund authorized field from the state. We then check to see, is refund authorized true? If it's not, we throw an error. We saw that in LangGraph Studio. We then extract the last message, verify it has tool calls, and then if it does, we extract that tool call. We only provide a single tool to the model, so we know it'll always be in the first field, and then we invoke that tool. 
this tool just takes in the product ID and returns a string saying we successfully processed your refund. We return that message that'll then get routed back to the agent where it can say, hey, we processed your message. Now, if we wanna go down, since we're running in the studio, we did not need to add a check pointer. Um, a check pointer is essentially a database which can store the values of your state so that you can interrupt your graph um, and then continue it later on while keeping the same state values that you had before. We also set this interrupt before field passing in tools. And this is gonna say every time you try and invoke the tools node, interrupt it before it's actually invoked. And that will cause us to, or that will stop the graph and allow us to update the state to set refund true or false. And then when we continue, it'll call the tools node and refund will be true if we said it was true or false and it'll throw an error. Now you want to, you're going to want to uncomment these lines so we can actually invoke the graph. And before we do, we can look at it and see exactly what it's doing. So we can see at the top, we've defined our config object, which contains a thread ID of refunder. And this is the ID that our check pointer is going to use to identify what thread it should find the state from when our graph is interrupted and then it continues. So we can keep the same state. We also define our input of, can I have a refund for my purchase order number one, two, three. And then we invoke our graph streaming the results, passing in the input and also the config. So our check pointer has access to the proper ID of that thread. We then log the names of the events, and then once it interrupts, ideally before the tools node is interrupted, we also need to uncomment this since we're running it programmatically. In the studio, you'll automatically get a check pointer added, but if you want to run it programmatically, uh, you need to add that there. So it should interrupt before tools. We should see this get logged to the console, and then we log refund authorized value before the update state. So we call get state on our graph, and then we see the values and refund authorized. This should be undefined to start because we have not set a value for it. We then call update the update state method, which will update the refund authorized field in our state to true, like we see here. And then we fetch the current state again, logging the value of refund authorized, and then it should be true. We then log continuing graph after state update, calling dot stream on the graph, passing in null as the input because we are continuing from where we left off and not passing in any new inputs, and also the config so our graph knows what thread to carry on from. And then we log the different events. So we navigate to the terminal, we can see this working in practice. So to run it, we run yarn start human in the loop, execute that, this will execute our graph, and we can go through all the different logs. So we see the first event was agent, and that's intended because we set the start to always call the agent node first. Then our graph was interrupted because our LM tried to call a tool, and since we've set interrupt before tools, it was interrupted before the tools node could execute. We then log the value of refund authorized, and it's undefined, which is what we expected as well. We update the state to true, and then we relog the value, and it's true because we just updated it to true. Next, we say continuing graph after state update. We re-invoke our graph, and then we see the event tools was called because that's what the graph was interrupted before, so it continues to the next event. We see that the tool returned successfully process refund because this was true, it was allowed to be invoked, and then pass back to the LLM where it said your refund was processed. So there's another way we can do this by setting dynamic interrupts. To do that, you want to navigate to the dynamic breakpoints file. Here, we see a very similar graph. Um, actually, everything is the same, except in our call tool node, if refund is not authorized, we interrupt it here. So if we throw a node interrupt inside of a node, not a conditional edge, it has to be inside of a node because it's a node interrupt, then if this is thrown, our graph will intercept that and interrupt and execute or exit the graph so that we can update the state. Um, perform some action. So instead of throwing an error, we just interrupt if it's not allowed. We then, if it is true, we do the same thing we did last time where we invoke the tool. Um, and then down at the bottom where we define our graph, it all looks the same, except here we don't add an interrupt before field because we have a dynamic interrupt. Then we do the same thing with our graph here where we invoke it, passing in a thread ID and input. We log all the values and it should work the same except we have our dynamic interrupt in the graph, so we do not need to pass in a static interrupt before field when we compile our check pointer. So if we go to the terminal and run this, it should look all the same, um, except in the code, it's happening a little bit differently. So to run this file in your terminal, you wanna run yarn start dynamic breakpoints, hit enter, we'll see everything log. We see agent interrupt before the graph state. We see the value of refund updated is undefined, which is what we want. We update the state to be true. We log it again, it's true. Continuing after state update, we see the tool, and then we see the AI message. All the same as the previous graph. However, instead of setting a static breakpoint here, 
like we did in the human in the loop file, we set a dynamic breakpoint where it interrupted inside the call tool because that field was false, and then we were able to continue on after that. Finally, let's look at the Langsmith runs for this. We will see three runs because we invoked it for the first run. Second, we updated the state. That's going to log to Langsmith for a second run. And then finally, we re-invoke the tool with our state update, and that's going to be the third run. So let's open up Langsmith and look at what this looks like. So once we open up Langsmith, we will see three different runs. The first is our first LangGraph invocation, where we pass in, can I have a refund for my purchase? Um, and then it calls the tool. And since the tool node was interrupted, we see it did not actually execute. It was interrupted. Then we go to the LangGraph update state, where we updated the state to pass refund authorized true. And that's going to update our state in our check pointer. And then finally, when we re-invoke the tool passing in the input of null, we see that the current state has refund authorized to true. So it was able to process the refund here and then call the LLM where the LLM said, hey, we processed your refund and you're done. So that is a high level example of what human loop is, how you can implement it in LangGraph. Um, and the next video, which is coming out after this, will show you a more in-depth example where we implement a stock purchaser agent, which requires authorization to purchase stocks after calling some tools to get information on those stocks. So I will see you all in the next video.